Hi everyone, Messy Coder back again with another Ultimate Survival tutorial. This video is an extension of a Twitch stream that I did just the other day. That's right, we're doing live tutorials on Twitch and you can take part. You can enjoy yourself and get hold of these live tutorials if you pop over to www.twitch.tv slash themessycoder. And I'm doing videos every Friday and Saturday, definitely. Definitely I'm doing Fridays and Saturdays because that means I can have a lie-in in the morning and the missus looks after the kids. I'll also try to sneak in a few videos on a Monday, maybe, and probably on a Wednesday. But only short ones just to pop in and tell you how much I love you. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can turn these silly ultimate survival fireplaces that only work, that only work, if you have both meat and wood together. And there's no ability to, to extinguish or ignite these fires either. And addicted to gaming, he came on and he asked me, hey, could you help tweak about the silly ultimate survival fireplaces and make them a little bit more special and beautiful, just like the, all of you are. So we did! Hooray! Hooray for us! And we did it live on stream and we played about. We had a little bit of error handling. We had a good time. Thumbs up for the good time. So if you want to watch the VOD for that, pop over to my Twitch channel and you can see the video on demand and you can play back and enjoy yourselves. But I'm going to make a very short, well, when I say very short, you know how short my videos are, a video showing you how you can do it for all you YouTubers who don't fancy popping over to Twitch just yet. But don't worry. Pop over to Twitch and then you can also win yourself some funky things in raffles because every now and again I do tend to give away some beautiful assets and interview other developers live on stream where you can ask them questions. Look that fire went out. Lovely. I think it's about time that we popped inside the editor. So sit back, get yourself your matches and I'll see you in a second. And here we are, this is how your fireplace is going to work in this tutorial. You can just chuck in some logs, put in a bit of raw meat, and then we'll click the ignite button, and then your fire will start, you can extinguish, you can take out the meat and have it just, there you go, that's just wood. You can chuck in the meat while the fire's going, and it will start cooking the meat as well. Now if you want to get your hands on the code of this for this tutorial, well, you just need to pop over to Twitch. You can go www.twitch.tv slash themessycoder and be a subscriber. Subscribers will get access to all the code in my tutorials for free. There you go. So look at that. Ignite, whip it out, and the fire goes out because there's no wood to burn, and that button changes back. Put it in, and now the button says extinguish. Lovely. Okay, let's pop back into Unity and start making this from scratch. Here we are inside the editor, and just before I kick off, I just want to tackle one of those little annoying things that people keep on messaging on YouTube and Facebook asking, how do you get rid of, let me show you, how do you get rid of the, these little UI help guides here? How do you get rid of them? People keep on asking. People have been asking this for a year now, and I've said it a few times. So let's show you again how you get rid of them. The time of day one, the one that you see in the top left hand corner, that's this. Show GUI. Turn it off. And if you don't untick stop time, you're never going to get night time coming because it will always be day. How do you get rid of the controller help guide? Well, under mail player, player input handler, show controls. Just turn that off. And that's it. Jobs are good and it's done. It's all you needed to do. There you go. And now they're gone. They're not there. You've still got the FPS counter, but you can always just remove that yourself from the UI as well. The other thing, don't forget when you're making your games, is you see this log amount and add that's only in there so you can actually debug and play about with your game. Don't leave it in when you're making your build, otherwise, everyone's going to be running around just spawning that they want, and that's just silly. That's just silly. And now I can have 100 metal fragments, and there you go. And you know when you see an asset flip because all of these things are still there. Because why? I'll tell you why, they're too lazy. Flippers are too lazy, so don't be lazy. Be crazy? Hey, we just made up a new thing. Cool. Alright, so first things first, pop over. It's an in-game GUI. GUI. And we'll find our windows. And we'll find here, campfire. And you remember how everything looks a bit freaky? Well, just click 2D and now everything is lovely. 
a little bit messy. I can't see what I'm up to, so I'm going to hide. Actually, i tell you what. First thing, let's hide everything in there. Lovely. Nice and clean. And we'll put the anvil on. Because as I'm messy, I want to just steal this button. I know we can make it ourselves, but hey, then I wouldn't be who I am. So let's copy that button repair and hide this anvil again. And now let's show our campfire. Lovely. There's our campfire. Extended him up. Campfire Extendo! Click on our fill and paste in the repair. We obviously we don't want it to be repair because it's not repair. So um, I'm just going to call this button because it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, does it? And here where it's got text, I'm going to put um, ignite because oh, it would be nice if it was in capitals. The default state of my fire is that the fire is not on. Let me just drink a cup of tea. Ah, delicious. The missus came in, gave me a cup of tea and some bickies. Let's put this font size down to 12. That's a bit nicer. Let's extend this button a little bit bigger. There you go. That way we can fit the word extinguish in. There you go. Lovely. And that's our UI changes that we're doing for now. That's it. Later we're going to add in this button. We're going to add in a basically our function that we're going to put in this. When you click the button, it's going to call a function. But for now, let's just click save and we'll find, if you pop over to here, you see this smelting station GUI? Those are the scripts that we want to be changing. So let's search for smelting and you'll see we've got two. Let's drag this little slider down here so we can see the text nicely. So smelting station and smelting station GUI. These are the only two files we'll be editing in this tutorial. Jobs are good. All right, let's see you in the favorite editor. Here we are inside Visual Studio, and we're going to just play about a little bit, a little bit of tweaky tweaky down here. So, first things first, I'm going to pop down, scroll down, and we're going to add in a new public ball. And I'm going to call this public ball turned on because, you know, we want our fire to be turned on. Actually, um, turned on is a good name because we want true and false. So, it's going to be turned on, true. And then it'll be on, turned on, false, and then it's off. And by default, it's going to be off. So public ball turned on equals false. There you go. That's all you needed to do there. Scrolly, scrolly, downy, downy, we go. Currently, the fireplace only works if both the fuel slot has something and the input slot has something. Input slot being whatever you want to cook. So obviously, this part here is stopping it from working as we want it to work. So we want it to only work if you have something in the fuel slot. And if we have something in the input slot, that's nice, but that's not the main requirement. So first things first, let's just edit this a little bit. What I like to do is I like to comment things out that I'm not going to use, and that way I remember what I've changed. So we'll put a bracket in here and slash slash, and we'll comment this part out. And now we'll put here the same. So we'll do a close our bracket slash slash. And now all it cares about is that do we have a fuel slot item and does that item have the property fuel time? Now here, because we've commented out these error handly bits, if it came across and tried to do this would kick up an error because maybe we don't have anything in the input slot. So how can you get the value for something that doesn't exist? So just like before, we're going to comment some things out. We're going to use this code later down. So, boom, there you go. Nice and commenty outy. So grab this. We're going to come back and grab this. We're going to grab all this stuff we've commented out. And we're going to stick it in a new method. So I'm going to call my method. Um, I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it what's cooking. So private void what's cooking. Okay, so we're saying now, if, and remember we copied, let's just put our curlies and everything in place. So we'll do an else, there we go. The structure of our if statement is ready for us to play. So we grab this. This is our first bit of error handling. Make sure it actually does exist. We'll put ampers ampersand there. And now we'll grab this one that we threw away before, and we'll put that in here as well. So now we're checking. 
do we have something in the input slot and does that input slot item have property burn time and burn result because obviously we want it to burn and we want it to output something and now remember these two that we commented out let's just grab them and shove them here ta-da lovely now if it doesn't have anything that has an in the input slot or that item in the input slot can't be burnt or cooked well then we need to output something else so now we're going to say another bit of error handling so just to be safe we're going to grab this one here just to be safe because every now and again i like to put a bit of error handling in because even though we're messy we don't want to be too messy there's extremes that even i won't go to and why am i putting this error handling there if we're calling it well we're going to call it let's just put it in there so we'll say what's cooking gets called instead of this code that we commented out put a semicolon so if i'm already checking has property fuel time why would i put it there well that's because it's an assumption that what's cooking is only going to get called while in here and i don't like assumptions because they make an s out of you and options exactly so let's grab this one put them in there and we'll say well if it has a property not fuel time oh yeah fuel time that is the right one so then we'll change fuel time burn time to be fuel time because we don't want to burn we want to get the fuel which actually it's still burning and instead of being input slot it's the fuel slot now if it doesn't have a property for fuel time then we'll just put null in there just to get it out of the way and now we need to have um, cleared out our item result because see here the item result it was outputting the string and actually this is just a string you could actually change this and hard code that to be a string of um, cooked meat if you want and it always output cooked meat but there you go leave that in so item result is going to be null and actually um, nulls can do better than null if we scroll down here what did they do they do string dot empty let's do that item result is string dot empty let's do that one instead there you go jobs are good much nicer always try to reuse bits of code that you see because sometimes other people seem to know what they're talking about much better than i that's for sure all right now we've got our what's cooking in place we need to add in another method and i'm going to call this one i'm going to make this one a public so this one is a public void and they're going to call this one turn on off okay and this one very simple we're going to see if our ball is on or off and then we're going to get it to do stuff so if turned on now do you remember before we were talking about we could have turned on equals equals true or turned on equals equals false or we could just leave it as if turned on or exclamation mark if turned on for false reason why i like to do uh i'll show you why i like to do this one if turned on that's nice and clean and easy and easy for me to remember but if you wanted to specifically say if it's off sometimes if you stick an exclamation mark in front it's easy to miss when i'm just playing about with cold with cold code even that you can't miss that you can't miss that that i'm explicitly saying it's false so that's why I like to put the equals equals false when I'm doing my balls, when I'm playing about. And later when I finish, I'll refactor and I'll go in and I'll change my equals equals false into a nice exclamation mark. Drink a bit more of my cup of tea. Oh no, I just spilled some of my tea on my keyboard. That's not good. It's both a waste of tea and I've made my keyboard dirty. That is not good at all. All right, on holder, updated, and we need to stick in fuel slot so now if it's turned on i'm going to force it to call this method again and for which slot because the item holder i'm going to call the item holder of fuel slot and that's our wood or whatever we're burning now i need to stick my else in and if there is if it's not on then it's obviously off and i'm going to call the method stop burning and that doesn't actually need any arguments in there 
and I'm going to say on changed earning make sure you update and that's this fellow here so after we've gone through to see if it's on or off we always just run this just to update and what's this stop burning? Stop burning is right down the bottom. Stop burning is a lovely little method. And that basically goes through everything to turn off your fireplace. It puts the properties to null. It wipes out the item results. It sets the burning state to be false. Lovely. It's lovely. We love it. We do. And actually, while we're down there, we need to add in our own. Because like I talk about error handling, just in case, just in case, this stop burning is being called and we haven't turned off our ball well we need to have our turned on equals false and that way our ball goes back to being false off so it's not on it's off lovely let's pop back up to where we were playing about up here okay what is on change is burning what on change is burning just make sure that our fire burns and we have these nice little toggle light effects and we've got sound that comes on of our fire crackling away and we set damage of our damage area to be true as well we want to play with this enumerator c burn because not only do we have to stop this bit of error handling to say make sure that there's something in both slots we also need to do it on this enumerator otherwise we're not going to have a good time so let's comment out this one so i'll put slashy slashy to comment you out and instead of being input slot current item being checked in the or statement we want our turned on to be checked in the or statement and there you go like i was talking about just a second earlier turned on equals equals false i'm explicitly checking to see our ball is set to false now if either of these are true we'll stop burning and we'll get out now he's put the exclamation mark in i've put equals equals false both exactly the same thing after that now we can call our what's cooking method lovely let's put a little bit of commenting every now and again just so you can see what's happening so down here now we also need to do a little bit more editing so you see here we've got if input slot current item current slack equals one well we need to actually make sure first of all there is something in there otherwise we're not going to have a good time because it's checking for something that might not even exist so input slots current item um, or actually not current item has item that's it so we care about does it have anything in there so we've checked here does it have anything in the input slot but also if it's down to one we don't want to stop burning because if we run out of things to cook our fire doesn't turn off it only turns off when we tell it to turn off so let's just comment out these two and save that okay lovely that's it for our smelting station cs file now let's pop into the smelting station gui file and inside the smelting station gui file we're going to make a variable for the text on our button. Do you remember that button? It has text that says ignite. Well, we want that text to change whenever our fire is stopped or started. If you push the button or wherever, it just stops by itself. So we'll put here serialized field and we'll say private text and label button. Very basic, simple name for our button. We'll also have to make ourselves a new method for updating our label to make it nice and tidy. So private void call this one update labels very nice simple name for our simple button we'll say if we actually have anything in that button variable then we're going to do stuff so we're going to say if current or oh, m current station is turned on else well, else it's obviously turned off so if it's turned on we're going to say label button text equals so let's try to do a little bit of spelling extinguish and we've got our semicolon at the end of it and if it's off well then we need to turn it on and to turn it on we're going to say ignite 
You can change that to whatever you want it to be. You could have it turn on and turn off or extinguish, ignite, whatever makes you happy. All right, let's make ourselves a public method that we can then attach to the button. So every time you push, you click on the button, then it will call this. And we're going to call it button turn on. Isn't that very simple, simple name. So again, we need to have an if statement, put that in there, and it's going to be if current station fuel slot, oh, not hides flags, fuel slot has an item. First thing that we're going to check is that is there something in our fuel slot? And if there is, then we can start doing funky things. Now we've got our ball and we can just toggle our ball to be on and off. And we do that by sticking an exclamation mark in front of it. So here we go. Now we want to update our labels and obviously we made ourselves that nice little method called update labels. So there you go, we can update our labels. Then we need to turn on and off our station, which is our fireplace. And we've made that method in smeltingstation.cs and we're going to call it by saying m current station dot turn on and off. Good so far? I think so. Now we actually need to turn on the crafting station. We can do that by checking that if it's turned on, we're going to set it to be burning true. Uh, otherwise, we're going to set it to burning false. So if our current station dot turned on, so that's our ball is true, then is burning dot set true and burn. Otherwise, that's the else, is burning dot set false. Now, do you remember in smelting station, we had private void on holder update and it's got an item holder. So we're going to grab you and we're going to put you in here so we can use this for a listener. We're going to paste you in and all it's going to do is update our labels and then return and get out. And then down here, you'll find a load of listeners being set. Let's add one for ourselves. So let's add a listener for the fuel input fuel. okay and we'll say station dot fuel slot updated because it's been updated add a listener and which one are we going to call yep that one that we just did on holder updated lovely and because we've got this listener set there this script nicely goes and clears them out so we'll paste you in. We'll say, let's put a comment here to say, remove listener. Here you go, two R's in remove. We'll say, oh, and there needs to be two slashes, otherwise that comment won't be happy. So current station dot fuel slot updated. Add listener? No, not add listener. We need to remove a listener. So we'll say, remove listener and it's the on holder updated that's passing through that is it for this script that is it we have done everything we set out to do easy peasy lemon squeezy now let's pop back into unity and add onto that button this method where was he here he is button turn on so here we are back inside and we've got our button and down here make sure you click on the button and not on the text on the button so we've got a plus and we'll drag in our campfire because i'm lazy and we'll find our function smelting station GUI script and where is he button turn on that's all we have to do for this fellow now over here don't forget that we added in this serialized variable for label button now you need to drag in your button there lovely do we have oh don't forget to turn your don't forget to turn these back on. 
or you're going to have a bad time. So, they're back. Pop over to our little man. Here's our little man. Inventory controller. Let's give ourselves some raw meat to begin with. Let's turn off the caps lock. So we've got some raw meat. Now we can, let's put that campfire in our inventory here. Let's put that building plan there. There you go. Save that. Now when I click play, I go straight away, stick down my fireplace, drop in my fire. It had a little bit of a fart there to get going. That's a little bit of a tweak we can play about with later because at the moment it runs through the script, it does a little bit of a and then it checks to see is it ignited or not and then it won't carry on. Now that ignition, oh look at that, it works. Look at that, it works and no errors. Can we turn it off? Yes. Turn it back on? Lovely. And as you see it's burning the wood. If I turn off now and it stopped it there, if I turn it back on, it carries on where it left off so you can't cheat. You can't just keep on turning on and off and then just having never ending wood supply. Because you go to 14. Yes, it burned it down to 14. Lovely. Let's drag our meat in. A little bit of a again. Click ignite. And now it will cook our meat. Another fancy thing that we've done is that if come on, cook the meat, cook the meat, cook the meat. You can do it. Yes, it did it. And because we have on the update for the input field, we're checking to see, is anything in there? Now, I've taken the meat out, it won't keep cooking meat. If I put the meat back in, it'll start cooking the meat again. Lovely. If I take the wood out, well, there's nothing to burn. So it immediately stops the fire, and it goes back to, say, ignite. If I put the wood back in, it won't start the fire again until I click ignite. That's it. Now we have a little bit more sensible fireplace in Ultimate Survival. Our campfire feels like it actually is something we control and not something that controls us. Now if you want to get your hands on the code for this tutorial, well all you need to do is pop over to Twitch and become a subscriber. www.twitch.tv slash themessycoder and subscribers get codes from the tutorials for free. Jobs are good. Well done. Alright guys, um, I'm off now to see what else I can cook and maybe to see if I can hunt a chicken. Yeah, I'm gonna, oh, I hit him! Wow, I hit a chicken! Fair play to me. Let's grab a bit more meat. Lovely, let's see what else we can cook. Now, if you wanna take part in any of my live tutorials on Twitch, don't forget, Fridays and Saturdays is when I tend to do the long streams, and weekdays is when I tend to do a short stream, which is probably either an interview or an asset review. We also play games like Miscreated, Stranded Deep, The Forest, and other type of survival games where we have a bit of fun and see what kind of functionality we can um, borrow. Yeah, borrow is a good word for our own survival game tutorial series. And I'm also going to be starting a new series on Twitch. It's going to be live streams only on Twitch for a tutorial series of how to make a survival game using the new version of Ultimate Survival when it comes out. So we'll put those on Twitch as live tutorials. They're going to be interesting because I think anything could happen. The world could explode. All right, guys, don't forget, if you do like these videos and you want to see more, look, the fire went out. Click on that big juicy red subscribe button down below. Go to Twitter, click follow, go to Twitch, click follow, have fun. And don't forget, if you do like it, click it. Till next time. If you want to see more of my crazy videos, click on the left side of your screen now. And down below, there's that big juicy subscribe button. And right next to it is the magic bell that if you click it, it will tell you if I've got a new video coming out. Till next time.